Hi, welcome back to CUSA's Control Quick Starts. I'm still Jeff Perkins. This is still Deep Lua, Tables of Rays and the Loops. Oh my. Uh, this happens to be episode two of our mini series on the loops. In this particular episode, you can expect to learn about the numeric four. They're really good for arrays uh, when we apply them that way. The I pairs loop, which is custom built for arrays, and the pairs loop which is purpose-built for traversing tables. The key idea is that there are three relevant forms of the for loop for working with tables and arrays. Let's take a look. Let's close this and let's pop into our little guy here. So here we are. If you watch the, the first episode, you will recognize this particular array. It's called my array. And it has three elements I've added to it. Uh, one, two, and three. Hello world, two, and I'm Batman. Um, again, there we are, we just have an array. So let's talk about the first kind of loop that's relevant to us. It is the numeric four. The way the numeric four loop works is it has this particular form. Four I equals one to Three, do the following, print out whatever's in the array. Uh, but notice here, I didn't say go to three. What I said was go to pound of my array. The reason that I used pound, uh, first of all, what is pound? Pound is the length operator. It's part of the standard Lua interpreter. And the way that it works here on our array is it starts running down the array. It starts at one and it checks to see that one has a value that's not nil. Two, yep, not nil. Three, yep, that's a string, not nil. And because that's currently, right? Yeah, I, I have five and six commented out. We're gonna circle around to that in a little bit. Um, because one has a, uh, right, so key one has a value, key two has a value, key three has a value, none of those values are nil, it counts, do, 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 and it comes back with three. Yep, there's only three, because there's no more keys um, in the array that it finds, and it goes, yeah, okay, it evaluates, and it comes back with the number three, so then 12 runs from one to three, and we see it prints out um, one, two, and three, exactly what we were looking for. Now, like I said, one of the caveats is that um, using the pound operator, it works all the way up until it gets to the first nil value, right? And key value pair, right? As soon as you have a key with a nil value, it, it thinks, oh, uh, that's it. We're all done. Um, and maybe you are, maybe you aren't. In our case, we were done. Secondly, there is also uh, a whole series of loops in Lua called the generic for loops. And there is a custom built version of the for loop made specifically for working with arrays. It's called the I pairs loop. And the reason why it's called I pairs is because, remember, right? What is it that makes an array an array, right? Because otherwise it would just be a table. It, the fact that the array has integer keys. So I pairs, right? The pairs are integers with values. And so the way the syntax works out for I pairs loops is like this here in line 25. For I comma V in I pairs, on the table called my array, do the following, print out everything in the my array, no problem. Um, <clears throat> why I and V? It could have been anything. It could have been, it could have been index comma value. Uh, because, I mean, this is what we actually mean, isn't it? Um, arrays have key value pairs, but all of the keys are integers. So I and V, this is, it's just common, it's what we do. Um, it could have been apples, comma, bananas. It's no problem. It's just I and V is fewer keystrokes and still meaningful. So for I, comma, V and I pairs on the table called my array, do the following, print it all out, hit go. There we are. Um, the numerical for loop ran again, which is fine. The I pairs loop runs. 
And there we are. It prints out one, two, three, exactly the way that we expected it to work. Um, something about iPairs. It's special from the standpoint of it will run through the array in sequential order. Yeah, that's probably what you would expect. In fact, it's kind of easy to do that. Again, all of the integers, all of the keys are integers. Um, so it's a little bit easy for it to do that. The other thing is uh, iPairs also um, will stop generally the first at the first nil value that it encounters, right? Key value, right? The first time you get a key with a nil value, it says, oh, uh, we're, this guy isn't part of the array, so we're, we're done, right? Okay. Lastly, remember what we said, all arrays are tables. There's actually a custom built for loop, generic for loop, that are built to run on tables. And since all arrays are tables, we can run it here as well. It's called pairs because again, key value pairs is what tables are, key value pairs. So, um, right, not I pairs, but just pairs. It'll run through the table. And since all arrays are tables, it works. Uh, it works exactly the same kind of syntax for I comma V in pairs on my array, do the following. And when we hit go, um, it runs through, it prints everything and it works, it works great, right? So for arrays, you kind of have three different uh, tools in your tool belt for getting around you know, on an array. Uh, now, line 41, I have left something to the reader, or I guess in this case, the viewer at home, go back up here, right? Get get this file, uh, recreate it, whatever. Run back up here to line five and uh, comment, right? Turn, turn five and six back on and see what it does. You'll learn something. Okay, now let's also, let's take a few more examples. So one of the things, that uh, that I have called out before is that you see these things. What are these things? This is this is an array of controls. Again, if you're not familiar with what I mean by arrays of controls, there's a whole other video. Uh, it's probably that way, or maybe that way, or maybe that way. I really don't even know anymore. Um, but it's out there. You'll find it. Go watch it if you need to. Um, here we are, my controls one, two, and three, they are an array of controls. And so this is actually a little bit special to the uh, QSIS implementation of Lua is that we can have, and let's turn this on, we can have an array of controls. And of course, I can loop over the array of controls using the I pairs loop. Again, note it, it's an array, so use I pairs or pairs again. A little bit, it doesn't matter. Um, it's an array, so use I pairs. So here we are for K comma V and I pairs on our array of controls, print K and V, and there we are, one, two, three, those are controls. Pretty as a picture. All right, let's turn that off. Let's turn this on, uh, click that button, and let's look at this, okay. Uh, again, if you watched the preceding video, you should recognize my table here. It's the same table. Uh, we have my table dot key one is the number one. My table bracket two is value two. My table dot key three is value three. My table dot key four is a function. Yeah, I know it's kind of cool. Um, and my table dot key five is a whole nother dadgum table. Cool. How do we work? through tables? How do we traverse tables? Uh, we can't really use the numeric four, can we? Because the numeric four is counting numbers. And there's really only one key that's a number here. So this is, is not going to work out too well. So I pairs also isn't going to work very well for us here because, well, this is a table more than it is an array. Uh, so we're sort of left with the last tool in our tool belt, which was the simple pairs loop. Let's use the pairs loop. Turn that on. Here it is. Simple. For K comma V in pairs on my table, do the following. 
print k comma v and let's print it. Print. Oh, so uh, first thing we can notice is it it worked, which is great. Um, but let's look at how it worked. The first thing it printed out down here as we look is uh, oh interesting. It printed key five, then it printed key two, then key three, then key one, then key four. What the heck, Perkins? <clears throat> Why? <laughs> we very clearly put the uh, table together in a particular order. Why did pairs just sort of run through it willy nilly? This is the pairs loop. The pairs loop uh, works a little differently under the hood. Um, what it guarantees is that you'll touch all the bases. What it doesn't guarantee is the order in which you will touch all the bases. In fact, if I hit reload, um, I very likely will get it to run through the loop uh, a different way. Yep, here we go, right? Key five, key one, key four, key three, and then two, right? It touched all the bases. It just did it however it wanted to. There's reasons for why that is. You can go read about it uh, in uh, the Lua manual or online or whatever. Um, the That's not really important for our purposes. What is important for our purposes is that it traverses the table. It touches everything in the table. Yeah, the order, it does it however it wants to. But secondly, a lot of the time, there is no clear implicit order in a table. It's not like arrays. Arrays very clearly have an order to them because it's it's one through n. Um, but tables, it kind of doesn't matter what order they uh, they are accessed because this is not really the it's not part of the idea. Okay, <clears throat> the other thing to notice here is um, yeah, it 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 returned everything to us, but it told us, for example, here key five is a table. Well. We just ran a pairs loop to tell us everything in my table. And now you're telling me that there's a table at key five. I want that to print out too. Totally. In fact, when would I do this kind of thing? When you're working with JSON or XML, like th those whole sort of paradigms are all about um, encoding and decoding tables and passing tables between devices as their method of communicating. So um, it really isn't weird that we have tables inside of tables. Um, sometimes you call those multidimensional tables or multidimensional arrays. It's a thing and it's here and then we can we can traverse that as well. Let's turn off this code for a second. Turn that off, clear that out. And then let's turn on this last little section of code and let's read it, okay? Because it looks exactly like 23 through 25, uh, but I, I've i clarified a few things, okay? So line 29 is a pairs loop on my table. And then line 30 says, uh, print the outer loops K and V. And then... Right, which is exactly what we did in line 24, right? So far, exactly the same. But one of the things that we've added here is that if we added this condition, if the type of V, remember the type function tells us what V is, what kind of critter is it? Um, if V is a table, then oh, hey, we found a table. We can tell ourselves we found a table. But more importantly, we can write another pairs loop inside of that condition to traverse the embedded table and print out all of its key value pairs. That's what we've said here. If uh, the type of V is indeed a table, then um, for K2V2 in pairs on V, right, that thing that we found, as we ran through the, the outer loop, i.e. the loop on the table, on the table called my table, um, if we find an inner table, then print it out too. And fire in the hole, rock and roll, there we go. Okay, outer loop runs, it finds key five. Ooh, key five is a table. Uh, then 
inner loop it runs through and it prints out those those keys and values in the inner table and then it kicks back out and it runs through the uh, the rest of the outer loop exactly as we were expecting so what have we learned today we have learned turn this back on we have learned that there are three kinds of for loops that are useful when we're working with arrays and tables. The arrays really has all three loops at their disposal. And tables makes use of the pairs loop. With that, I'm going to sign off for the moment and I'll see you again probably real soon in the conclusion of our mini series.